Church family, welcome to our Sunday service online. And um, we're going to start with a word of prayer, and then we'll hand over to Pastor John, who will be starting the service with a word. Yeah, slightly different today. Uh, yes. Usually, we use to the songs happening before the preaching, but today, Pastor John is going to take us straight into God's word. So, really, a joy to be together. My name is Jacob. I'm Juliet. Yeah. Yeah. Would you pray for us and then Pastor John can carry on. Sure. Let us pray. Mm. Father God Almighty, we thank you for this wonderful day you have given us to mm. come before you, even today. And uh, we're in a month of Thanksgiving and mm. we our hearts are full of Thanksgiving to you. So we pray that God Almighty, the word that is going to come through Pastor John, mm. Lord, it will come with clarity it will come to encourage us. It will come to strengthen us. It will come with hope. It will come to uh, restore things in our lives and bring healing and deliverance. And it will come with strength. We thank you so much, O oh God. And we ask that you will bless Pastor John as he, as he brings the word to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Over to you, Pastor John. Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining with us again this Sunday. Uh, November each year is our Thanksgiving month and uh, it being November again during 2020, we want to take time to reflect on the year and it's been a difficult year for many people, it's been an unusual year for many people, but we want to take some time as we reflect back over the year to thank God for his provision, thank God for his grace and mercy and thank God for the many different ways in which we have experienced his love in our lives. I'm sure that you'll agree with me when I say that 2020 has been a year like no other. We've, we've had to face a worldwide pandemic that's affected all of us. And uh, just think uh, a year ago, none of us would have expected to face a year like we have just faced. This has affected whole communities You'll know that uh, we've been through what was called the lockdown period, where all of us were forced to stay at home for our own benefit and had to learn to do things online. Some of us had never done that before, but we've had to learn to do that. And amazingly, we've got it right. The government has had to step in with emergency measures because of the way people's lives were, were devastated by the lockdown and by the coronavirus People have had to make adjustments because of a loss of income, a loss of, of their jobs, and because of salary cuts. But then there have also been those who have lost loved ones during this uh, time of COVID and were unable to be at a loved one's bedside. Such an important time for them, but also an important time for us. And so the impact of this year on all of our lives has been far great, greater than we ever could have imagined. I know for myself, uh, my own mother at the age of 90, uh, staying in a retirement center in Pretoria, contracted COVID and amazingly made it through that, only uh, for a few weeks later to die of other complications. And like many of you, I was unable to be at her bedside uh, when she died. Fortunately, and in God's grace, I was able to see her one, just once in hospital. Uh, and that was uh, the first time that I'd seen her from, uh, from March this year, when I was able to be with her. And as a family, we were able to celebrate her 90th birthday. And we've been through uh, things like this. But you know, despite all of this, it is important for us to take time to reflect on and to praise and thank the Lord, because our faith is real, and it's still real, even in times like COVID. God does not stop loving us when things are bad and things are difficult. You know, God's grace is still sufficient when we're going through difficult times. And God's promises are still good, even in, when things don't work out the way we'd, we would have liked them to. In Psalm 103, 
we are reminded that we always have a reason to praise and thank the Lord. That we should be careful not to forget all of his benefits to us. David, in writing this psalm, speaks to himself, speaks to his own soul. When he says, praise the Lord and forget not his benefits. And may I remind you today <clears throat> that as God's people, we should not forget his benefits to us. It is so possible when we are surrounded by so much bad news to forget the benefits of God to us and no longer be people who praise and thank the Lord. Psalm 103, the psalmist says, Pray the Lord, O my soul, all my innermost being, praise his holy name. Listen to what he's saying. All of my innermost being, he's speaking to himself, all of my innermost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Don't forget, <clears throat> pardon me, the benefits of God. He forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. <clears throat> pardon me. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good, with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He satisfies our desires with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. This is as he reflects over his life. These are some of the conclusions that he comes to. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. For he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. And then listen to this comparison that he makes. <clears throat> For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. Again, he goes on, as far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it's gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all you heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And you know, as we read the psalm, it is meant to awaken something in the believer every time we read it. It awakens us to God's goodness again. It, it awakens us to, to God's faithfulness to his people despite our limitations. We are just like the dust, it says. It awakens us to the, rea the reality that there is a bigger picture of life than we are able to see. It awakens us to the rule and reign of God over all things again. It awakens us to the fact that we never deserve any of the blessings that we receive from the Lord. And it awakens us to the fact that we are blessed and privileged even when the going gets tough. You know, in, during this year, we have been reminded how hard life can be. 
But it's also highlighted the fact that people have experienced God's goodness and they have experienced his grace and they have experienced his love during these times. No, for me, this psalm reminds me that God has not changed, that he remembers our frailty and what we have been through. Let's allow this morning, let's allow the Holy Spirit to stir up in us a new appreciation of this but by drawing our attention to who God is and what God has done for us, especially during the course of this year. Can we take a moment to pray? Can we take a moment to ask the Holy Spirit to minister to each one of us as we listen to the words of the psalmist, as we reflect uh, on what he has written? <clears throat> Father, this morning, we thank you that you are a God of grace and of mercy and of love and compassion. Lord, you know that this year for many, many people has not been an easy year. Sometimes it's been confusing. Sometimes we have been uncertain of what the future holds for us. Sometimes, Lord, we have had to face things not knowing uh, what tomorrow holds and what answer there is for tomorrow. And yet, God, as we look back, our Father, we look back, we see that you have been a God of grace and compassion and goodness and kindness to us. And I want to pray this morning, Holy Spirit, that you will awaken something within us again today. That, Lord, there might be an overflow of gratitude and love for you as we recognize what you have done for us. And, Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this psalm reminds us that God's grace and goodness and kindness is for every season of life. And may I stress that God's grace and goodness and kindness is for every season of life. It's not just for the good times, but, but as, as the psalmist here reflects on the different seasons of life, the different things that he's been through, he remembers God's goodness and grace and forgiveness and compassion in every season of life. You see, David is writing as an older man, and as an older man is able to do, he's reflecting on the different things that have happened uh, in his life. And he sees the hand of God and the way God's hand has played out in his life in the different times that he has been through. He remembers the extent of God's forgiveness to him when he sinned. And you'll remember that, that story, that account of, that we have of David. David is king. David is the man of God. David is the man who's written psalms. David is the man of prayer. David is the man of faith. But this man, David, commits adultery with Bathsheba one night as he, as he sees this woman bathing uh, on the roof of her house. And, and, and his desires overtake him. And he has... <clears throat> Pardon me, he has Bathsheba brought to him and commits adultery with her. And then when he discovers that she is pregnant, he has her husband put to death. And then he tries to cover that all up. <clears throat> Pardon me, but God has his way in David's life. And, and this is uncovered as he, as he faces the prophet Nathan. The prophet Nathan, uh, having this word from the Lord, this word of insight from the Lord, comes to David and challenges him and exposes what's been going on in the secret places of David's life. And as David repents and confesses to the prophet his sin, the prophet is able to respond to him and say, the Lord has forgiven you. We read this in 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 13. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin and you are not going to die. And you know, for me, it is important that I never forget how much God has forgiven me and what God has forgiven me for. 
And you know, it's so easy. We can be, become so used to these things that, that we forget how much God has forgiven, forgiven us. And surely one of the reasons we praise and thank God is for how much he has forgiven us and how he continues to forgive us for our sins. David remembers the evidence of God's healing when there was sickness and disease in his life. In verse 3, he says, who forgives your sins and heals all your diseases. And you know, I continue to be amazed each time I see a healing taking place. To me, I never get tired of seeing the miracle of God's forgiveness, a uh, healing rather, in the life of a person. I remember just a, a few Sundays back when we were praying for people for healing. And how God touched somebody's life and brought healing to their life as we were praying for them during that Sunday service. David remembers how God had spared his life over and over again when he was in danger from his enemies. You remember David as a, as a younger man uh, is pursued by King Saul who is jealous of David and wants to kill him. And over and over and over again we see God's protection. We see David also facing this, this, this Goliath, this man uh, that we know as Goliath on the battlefield and how God gives him victory over an enemy much stronger than him. If you've got a chance, you can read in 2 Samuel chapter 7 uh, and chapter 8 of, of the record of the many victories God gave to David over his enemies. David is reminded of God's love and compassion that was evident to him all of the time. He says in verse 4, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with love and compassion. And you know, our praise and thanks to God today, during this November, as we reflect over 2020, comes from the fact that his grace and his love and his kindness and his mercy is for every season of life, even for years of COVID. God's hand has been upon us and God has been with us and God has been gracious to us and God has been kind to us. But then the psalm also goes on to remind us of the benefits that you and I have of being in a relationship with God. As I was reading through the psalm, I'm reminded that it's important for us not only to be able to remember, but to articulate the blessings and the benefits of being in a relationship with God. It reminds us not to forget all of these benefits. They need to remain a reality in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I need to constantly be intentional about remembering the blessings and the kindness and the goodness of God through every season of life. Like many of you, I can easily be overtaken by all of the bad news. And yet, because of my relationship with God, I am privileged and I am blessed. The psalm reminds us not to forget these benefits. The grace and the forgiveness of God should always be the highlight of our relationship with Him. Verses 10 to 12, He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And you, rem and you know, remembering that God has forgiven us helps us to live each day with a deep, deep sense of gratitude to him. You remember the story of that sinful woman, the Bible describes her as a sinful woman, who comes, into, uh, comes to Jesus, he is having a meal, and she takes this jar of expensive perfume and she breaks the jar open. And then she pours the perfume over the feet of Jesus and then uh, she takes her long hair and she begins to wipe his feet and she is weeping profusely. But she is not weeping out of sadness. She is weeping out of gratitude because she has discovered what it means to be forgiven, what it means to be forgiven by God for the sinful life that she has lived. And let us never forget how much God has forgiven you and let how much God has forgiven me. 
Paul, when he's writing to that young man, Timothy, that he had discipled and mentored, he says this in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, as he reflects on his own life and his own forgiveness, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and in unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. You know, that's what birthed the words of that song that has become uh, well known right across the world. Amazing grace. The gratitude of one man to God for his forgiveness despite the terrible things that he had done. John Newton, who was a slave trader, and we are all too familiar with his story. But he, he could not help himself <clears throat> penning those words of amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. God's forgiveness to us. Undeserved forgiveness. But then the psalm also reminds us that God's compassion for us is a reminder of how much he cares for us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. One of the lies that all of us will have to deal with at some time or another is the fact that God does not really care for us. I don't know if you've been in a place like that. I certainly have. Where you begin to think that God doesn't really care for you. Remember those words even when the, the serpent uh, came to Adam or came to Eve in the garden. And those words, did God really say? Did God really say? Can you really believe that? And sometimes we need somebody like David to put things back into perspective for us. That God is compassionate and God really cares for us as his people. But we're also remind, reminded from the psalm that, that God's love continues to be real to us as we obey him. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love or the Lord's loving kindness is with those who fear him. And his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precept. God's love is an everlasting love, an unchanging love. Isn't this the kind of love that we all need? Not just a love that condones anything that we do, but the kind of love that reinforces godly, God-honoring lifestyles. Now, praise and thanksgiving is a very important and powerful part of the Christian life. When God's people praise Him, and when God's people thank Him, it is because their perspective is right. They are seeing things through the eyes of faith. And I know for myself, especially when times have been difficult, I've had to pause. And I've had to be intentional. And I've had to see and look where God is at work and how God's love and compassion and grace are at work in my circumstances. I was sharing with you about the loss of my mom. As I reflect back over what happened during that time over and over and over again, I could see God's love and compassion and the miracles that happened even during that difficult time. When God's people praise Him, it's because they are trusting Him and they are trusting in His promises and, you know, sometimes it's not the circumstances that, that are going to cause us to praise him. It's because of who God is. And it's because of the promises of God. You remember the prophet in the Old Testament who writes these words, even though the fig tree does not blossom and there's no fruit on the vine, yet will I rejoice in the Lord and joy in the God of my salvation. You know, when God's people praise him, Strange things begin to happen around them. I'm reminded again of that account in Acts chapter 16 when Paul and Silas were, were put into prison. And the account tells us that at about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and they were singing hymns to God. 
and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. When we refocus our, our attention on God, we are refreshed as we are reminded of who He is, what He can do, His promises to us as His people. As the psalmist says, praise the Lord, you His angels, you mighty ones who do His bidding, who obey His word. Praise the Lord, all His heavenly hosts, you His servants who do His will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And I wanted to set the tone for the rest of the service through this message, through this song, as we will hear from different people in our church some of their reflections of this past year, some of the, the difficulties they faced, and yet at the same time, Looking back, they've seen the hand of the Lord, how God has provided for them, how God has been with them, how God has been at work in their lives. And I trust as you listen to some of their stories and some of the things that they have to say, you will be encouraged. And you with David will be able to say, praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So take this time just to hear the stories of people to, to rejoice in the Lord with them, but also for yourself this Thanksgiving Sunday to say, Lord, I want to praise you for all of your benefits to me. And so, Father, I thank you that as we look back, we can see and will see your hand in our lives, your benefits, your goodness, your kindness, and your love to each one of us. And I pray for your people today, Lord, that they may be encouraged even in the journey that they walk at the moment. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John, for that wonderful word. Always a joy to hear Pastor John open up God's word. Yes. Um, we are now going to transition into a time of worshiping the Lord with songs and singing. And Kevin and Kara are going to lead us in that. Yes. Uh, after that, immediately after that, there's going to be testimonies from our church family, from mm -hmm. people within our church community, yes. testifying to God's faithfulness, God's goodness. So we're going to move straight into that after the songs that uh, Kevin and Kara are going to lead us into. So over to you, Kevin and Kara. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you that we can come to you in worship today. Thank you that there's an endless number of things that we can praise you for, even in the most difficult times or when we don't understand or when everything's confusing. You are still good. Um, your love still endures forever. Um, there's still so many things that we can praise you for. And yeah, we just pray that today as we come before you, um, that you would inhabit our praises, mm -hmm. that, um, yeah, that you would come and connect with us each on a personal level, that you would remind us of your goodness in our lives, mm -hmm. and that, um, yeah, that as we praise you, our hearts would be lifted up and um, we would be reminded of everything that's true about you.
heart Be the wind inside my sails
Family. Long time no see, and how we've longed to see you all again. We run a production company called Slingshot Media. Believing culture is shaped at the feet of storytellers and, and that we're the result of the stories we've heard and believed. So even this one, we, we, we form us thankful for the opportunity to publicly express our, our gratefulness and thankfulness for God's faithfulness um, to us in so many ways as He continues to call and carry us each and every day. I can find these soundbite type stories, mostly of God coming through and blessing us, providing a job or provision or in a miraculous way. Um, you know, they sort of allude or paint a picture of a genie like God who, who always answers prayers by granting our wishes as if you know, we imagine we, we may know what we need better than He does. So, um, and this can reflect more of our preoccupation with comfort and security or our desire for blessing and prosperity um, then it does testify to the goodness and the faithfulness of an omnipotent and omnipresent all-knowing and all-powerful full God. Well, where to begin? Indeed. 2020 has been a gift. <laughs> sure, yeah. When COVID hit and the lockdown strategy was shared around the world, we received um, the news of five major jobs being immediately cancelled. The news came almost on the same day or within a few yeah, days of panic. each other. I was very stressed. Um, from my perspective, this was an absolute train smash. Anxiety almost immediately rushed forward. Mm. How are we going to pay the bond? How are we going to pay salaries to our employees? How would we pay the school fees? And even though we were praying, um, I was still planning salary cuts with our employees. I was trying to make plans to get out of office rental agreements. Um, the idea of restructuring our medical aid and insurance, even selling our house. Basically trying to reduce overheads wherever possible. Honestly, I found myself at the end of myself with worry. With little or no ability to fix the situation myself. I couldn't do anything. It was a deeply challenging time to have to give up and accept that things really might not be okay. But it is precisely at the end of ourselves that God promises to begin and we can, I can testify to that this morning. There was nothing I could do in my own strength. I had to give everything over to God. Everything I've clung to for, for a long time, I realized. Um, and the scene was set for a miracle or for mayhem. We've been challenged to, to pay rent every month, mortgage bonds, school fees. Um. Certainly on the work front, we have encountered many, many trials, um, having a lot of jobs and contracts cancelled, having plans and timelines destroyed, having dreams seamlessly crash and burn. <laughs> Yeah, but we seriously lacked wisdom and I, I love how when you ask God, He actually gives it to you so generously and without reproach. We received revelation and, and recalibration of our understanding of what is important and how to trust again, um, how to truly surrender. How to receive responsibility yet surrender control, to live again dependent, prayerful for our daily bread. <laughs> What a sheer gift this year has been. We have really felt God's presence and His protection and His provision. Um, we're learning to be content with much or with little, to get along with humble means um, and how to live in prosperity. Yeah, um, we can do all things with Him who strengthens us. Um, for surely God has provided strength. Um, I mean, He's strengthened our marriage to a degree. He's strengthened our, our faith as we testifying to His he strengthened our children's faith with time spent with them. The real turning point for us was when I truly 
let go and surrendered and asked God for his strategy, for his wisdom and for his steps. And God really did speak. Within a day or two, we had a strange spirit breathed new strategy to pivot our little company and our family. Um, God inspired new products, reusing old assets in new ways. Um, miraculous provision of permits during level five to shoot, which was unheard of. Um, and there was so much need for stories. It wasn't just paid work. We received fresh requests for COVID related work and stories for online conference videos, for post-production and um, for Feed the Nation stories. Yeah, there was like a whole massive response all around the country and, and just stories to be told. There were so many churches that went online to online platforms and, and so many of our team found a place to be increasingly helpful in that space. It seems like God had prepared us in advance for a time such as this and it was great to see. And it was just mere cash flow challenges. Um, but yeah, we had time to consider the sparrows or the dogs barking. We could keep all our employees and not only that, we kept super busy. We were being helpful, we loved how our community started to take care of each other and it was super humbling to receive help and support from, from friends, from family, from strangers all over the world. Yeah, we've been so thankful for this year of trial and, and what the enemy intended for harm, God has, has used for good. And the same sword that we were intimidated and threatened by, you know, God has cut the giant's head off with. So, yeah, we sit here and we really consider it a sheer gift when tests and challenges come at you from all sides, you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into, into the open and shows its true colors. So, yeah, don't try and get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Um, we've been carried. We have received help and we are, are filled with courage to face many giants um, that may come because... Yeah, this land is good and God's promises are yes and amen and, and we are certainly, certainly not alone. So hello everybody, this is just such a privilege to be able to share with you about what's been going on in our lives and in our life group's life, lives I suppose, over the past uh, seven or eight months during lockdown. Uh, my name is Phil. I'm Dale. I'm Kami. And uh, we're all part of the same life group. And, you know, little did we know that when the lockdown started, um, what would actually happen, you know, to people in our life group. But it's just a testimony to God's goodness and provision during this time that we're going to share about. You know, we had people who lost their jobs, getting retrenched, people who went on short time, no pay. Um, some people only recently been able to get back to work. Uh, but through it all, we've really been able to just see how God loves us, how good he is, and how he has actually provided for us as a group of people. So what we felt the Lord prompt us to do at that time, because he could see ahead and we couldn't, was to start our own solidarity fund. And just according to Acts 2, where everybody put together what they had so that nobody was in need, um, we put it out there to life group members and said whatever they could contribute, whenever they could contribute, it would be wonderful if we could start this fund. It's just been amazing how people have contributed out of, you know, what they have. And, um, and as the needs have come up, we've been able to, to meet those needs miraculously. Um, but I'd really like to chat to Camille and let him explain to you some of the things he went through. So Camille, what did you feel when you knew you were not going to get paid and you had a family of four children and a wife to keep going? Uh, first of all, uh, I thank God for this opportunity. It was very difficult because when I did get letter from work that the situation is going to be a very difficult one. I didn't expect that like it, it uh, uh, is now. So I took my letter to my leader of our life group, Phil. I showed the letter and uh, he said to me, you must pray God, don't worry. God is in control of everything. And uh, I was worried because like a human being. Mm. And uh, when I went back home, my wife started to ask me what we can do now. 
And I say, I don't know. God knows. God knows can provide. At least I took this letter I gave to Phil in Life Group. She said to me, let's see what's going to happen. And God is in control of everything. So from there, it made me like to cool a little bit down. Mm. So what did you actually pray to the Lord for? Yeah, I was praying because I didn't, I, don't, I didn't know where can I go, who can I ask. I was praying God that to help me because I got, a, like you say, a big family, four children, and uh, I didn't know how, where can I go, how can I start, and uh, it was like God sent to this life group, and they did, they did really surprise me, mm. so I I didn't even believe of, uh, for that, even until now, I'm not believing, it's, it's like a dream for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what are you grateful to the Lord for doing for you and your family in this time? Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know really what can I say to the Lord, because when you hope, you put your hope in God, I know that God going to provide, because it was not... Even not my family member, they, I don't know. They didn't want to think about me. They promised, but they didn't do any single thing. But with the family that God gave it to me, and uh, they make me very happy. They make me very joyful. Even my family, my wife, my children, they so happy to say, Lord, thank you for life group and for the church, what they, 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 they made for us. Mm. So with the church's help, and with the life group's help, you were able to come through this time, okay? Really, if it was not the help of life group and church, it would be very, 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 very difficult for me. Mm. So, yeah, so we just give God the glory for Hallelujah. people's amazing ability to give, which helped you and your family to get through this time. Really, I must thank everyone that really contributed for my family starting from church and life group, especially for our leaders of life group, they make really to put me, to give, to put me in peace. If it was not them, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, well, thank the Lord that he, really, <laughs> he prompted us to, to do is that. A, a provider. Yes, but Camille has a, is a chef and he has an amazing ability to make croissants, uh, plain ones, and chocolate ones. We encouraged him to use that skill that God has given him to actually take orders and sell them so that he could do something for himself to earn some money. And so that's what we've been doing for the last, I don't know how many months, each week, um, um, orders come in and full, um, Phil doesn't make the croissants, Camille makes the croissants. And uh, yeah, we've been, he's been able to support himself in that way. Really to that point, Dale, I can thank you very, I can thank you too much because if it was not you to help, like I say, you, you are the a general manager because <laughs> you plan every single thing. And it was like a, a joke and I see it became a reality. Mm. So really I must thank you a lot because if it was not your effort, I, did, I don't know, I could only sit like this myself and thinking, but and uh, I must thank also our life group because the idea came from life group. Mm. And uh, I didn't, didn't believe in that myself. I, also, I saw it like a joke. And I see like the thing is, did it really help, mm. help, help a lot. Oh, so funny. really I must thank you for that, yeah. for everything. And I, I don't forget that. Is you selling for me also? <laughs> when I bring it, feeling dead, yeah, you charge the put table there and they sending message to the people. The constant is here. I'm very proud of you. I know that you are my father and mother. Really, I don't know what can I give it to you. Yeah, so but it's, you know, to me. <laughs> it's God. You know, yeah, really. he 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 brings people together in families. You really? know, even when their own family doesn't kind yes. of come up to help. I'm very proud mm. of you. I'm very proud of Life Group for your support. Really, that is good. Awesome. Thank you. So one of the other things we've been doing with the Solidarity Fund and the Life Group is each month we try to put together 10 food parcels for Capricorn Park. And the one month we felt 
we should do it, but we didn't have enough money left over in the fund. And so I said to Phil, I think we must step out in faith, even though that money is not in the fund, we need to step out in faith and go and buy those 10 parcels worth of food. So we did that. We weren't even out of the driveway on that day when my phone, well, Phil's phone oh, rang and there was a deposit, 1,500 rand, and it's labeled, referenced for food parcels. So it was so exciting that we'd actually stepped out in faith, not having the money, but before we even got to the shops, the money had arrived. So we're just so grateful to God for um, prompting somebody to put that money in so that we were able to continue to bless other people. So that was a great uh, testimony for us. So really the question is, what are we thankful for? Because this is, after all, Thanksgiving month. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've told you all these stories and these testimonies, but it's really about God's goodness. Mm -hmm. We are so thankful, you know. In one of those Psalms, it talks about the benefits that God has for us. Mm -hmm. And some of the benefits that we just want to give thanks for is, is firstly a loving Father, a loving Heavenly Father who loves us so much. He said He'd never leave us. He'd never forsake us. He'd meet all our needs. And he really come through in all of this. So we just want to give real thanks for that. We also want to thank him for putting us into families. Now, we do have our natural families, but putting us into a family, a community, yes, a community of believers. And in our case, we reference to the life group because God has done a work in the hearts of people in the life group that has softened them up and caused them to be generous. generous yeah. And that's the work of God. Uh, so we're really thankful for that too. We're thankful for the fellowship we enjoy. You know, we've got people uh, in our life group. Our youngest member is 20 years old. Our oldest is 80-something. And yet, we're just so thankful for the diversity of ages of people. Um, and just a ways of thinking. And yet, there's this unity in our group. And we're so thankful for that as well. So really, all I can say is, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for getting us through this time. It's not over yet. Um, it does concern me that people seem to think it's over, but it's not over yet. But we know that as we go forward, God is going to continue providing for us, for the people that uh, in our life group, and for everybody else around us. So we just got to be really, really thankful. And that's what we are. Gosh, and we just finished doing this interview when Phil's phone went off. And someone has just deposited 1,500 Rand in his bank account saying four food parcels for this month. How amazing is God just supplying all our needs again and we can bless others. So thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hi, my name is Leah and I'm nine years old and I'm very grateful for my friends because they're very funny and very kind to me and they're very cool friends and I'm glad I'm chosen them. I'm grateful for my mom because she always wants to spend time with me and that she's always very kind to me and my dad that he is very daring sometimes and always quite adventurous with me and my brothers because they're always very funny and sometimes annoying <laughs> and and they're also very 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 nice to me and i'm also very grateful for god because he gave me life and 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 all my privileges and and all those kind of things and and my heart and I just want I'm also very grateful for my dog because <laughs> um, he's very funny too yeah so we thank God for those testimonies yeah. we trust that uh, you have been both challenged and encouraged by those words of testimony and that you yourself are filled with a spirit of thankfulness for all God has done in and through your life during these challenging years. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we are, we as a church, as you all know, we are also thankful and we're going to hand over to Shen to further inspire you with what God is doing through his people. 
is going to be awesome. Over to you, Shane. Hi again, my name is Shane. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been sharing some stories of God at work, and I want to share another story or, or two with you again today. Um, some years ago, we were up in Colesburg with the youth mission, and uh, we had rented a building that we were going to be using for children's ministry. And when we arrived there, the building was closed. Uh, so I took a couple of the leaders and we went into Colesburg to go and speak to the people at the municipality. Uh, we were away for about an hour, came back into the community and found God at work in an incredible way. Blew me away to see about 15, 20 young people from Connect Church praying for people in the community on the street outside this building. And God was at work. Um, there was, a, there was a, a lady who was holding her baby, of, well, child of about two years old. Um, and uh, this child had a, had a huge lump on her back and wasn't able to walk. It was paralyzing her. And uh, one of the young people put his hand on that lump and it literally filled his entire hand. Um, as, as a group stood there praying, that lump just disappeared. She was so ecstatic. Um, she ran. She called one of her friends who had been struggling with back pain, had seven operations. Uh, the lady was also blind, um, partially blind, hadn't seen her husband properly for 17 years, and she had um, arrhythmia in her heart. And she came from far away in the community. Uh, she came and joined one of the groups, and these young people stood and prayed for her. And she looked up. <laughs> And she saw her husband for the first time in 17 years. And then she said, my back, my back is, I have no pain. Uh, and, and she felt her heart and, and there was no arrhythmia. God had just touched her, miraculously healed her. That was what was happening on the streets. And I stood back in absolute awe of God, watching these young people just engaging in interaction, interacting with the people of Colesburg. God at work, the miraculous happening. So grateful for the opportunity to be there. So blessed to have witnessed firsthand God at work. Another story I would love to share with you is uh, uh, happened just a few years ago up in Malawi. And we were on a trip there from Connect Church, went into a community that we hadn't been into before and were busy walking around the village. And uh, as we walked past, uh, our interpreter said, that lady on the, on the veranda there, um, is blind. She can't see anything. We carried on walking, went to go minister to some people, prayed with them. And as we were walking back, the interpreter said to me, aren't we going to pray for this woman? And I took a deep breath like, okay, she's blind. Yeah, let's pray for her. And we gathered around her, asked her what she could see. I, I held my hand in front of her face. She couldn't even see shadow. And we prayed. And after a few moments of praying, I held my hand again and she could see shadow. Which sort of indicated to me that God was at work and there was something happening. And so we prayed again and I held my hand back in front of her face again and moved it up and down. And she said, yes, I can see that. I can see the, the hand moving. And then I held up a few fingers and she couldn't see. And so we prayed again and I held up a few fingers and she could, she could tell me how many fingers I was holding up. And so over the next 30 minutes, I gradually moved my hand further and further backwards, held up various numbers of fingers, and she could identify them. Until we were about, I was about four meters away from her. And I thought, okay, that's it. And I said to the team, let's just pray again. And we prayed for her the last time. And she looked up as we were praying. She looked up and she said, oh, those children are eating mangoes. And I turned around and looked, and there, about 100, 150 meters away, were a group of children sitting under a, a, a tree, and they were eating mangoes. She could see perfectly. Lily was blown away that God had taken time, and, and he was so concerned and so interested in her that he had brought us from Cape Town to come and share with her, to share the love of Jesus with her. So we had an incredible opportunity to just witness to her. She didn't come to faith that day, but I know that she was impacted. This is Thank Offering Month. and You have one more opportunity 
just to ask God what He would have you to give in thanksgiving for what He's been doing. And then also to help those who are going out in our local communities and also beyond our, our borders to share Jesus with people who don't yet know Him. I want to encourage you, ask the Lord, what would He have you give? God bless you. Thank you, Shane, for that amazing testimony of how God uses His people that are just willing to step out in faith and go out for mission and evangelism. Wonderful testimony. Mm. Thank you so much. Mm. Um, some of you already have uh, been giving uh, throughout this month of Thanksgiving. Uh, some of you are maybe feeling touched and led to give at this time. Yes. Uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, there are three different ways you can give. You can give through EFT. If you're giving by EFT, please remember to reference it as Thank Offering 2020. Yes. Uh, or you can give through SnapScan. Or you can just put it in an envelope and drop it in the church office. Any of these ways that is convenient for you, please do so. We want to take the opportunity to thank the church for being a very generous church. Mm. Um, we've seen that through this COVID period, various ways that the church have been called upon to give yes. and people have responded with generosity. Mm. We really pray that the Lord will bless you. The Lord will look after you. The Lord yes. will provide for yes. you. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for being part of this uh, Thanksgiving month. Yes. And uh, thank you everyone for being a generous community of people. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord strengthen you. Yes. Thanks for joining us in this service. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Yes. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.